Hello YouTube, welcome to Coding with Dom. I'm Dom and this is me coding. We're going to be coding Nightwatch again, um, but this today I want to show you how to use a very, very powerful functionality of Nightwatch, which is the concept of page objects. Page objects is probably the best way to avoid duplication in your code. Uh, take advantage of the dry principle and make sure that you're keeping everything in one place and you're not repeating yourself all over the place. Um, I really uh, think page objects is a very important concept when you're writing tests with Nightwatch. And it's the reason why I'm facing this, even though I know that there's some people that want to see me talking about how to get tests in CI and other concepts. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there soon. Um, but so far, we've seen how to write basic tests, how to get up and running, how to debug tests. And now we're going to be looking at page objects. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your grandma, share on social media, do all that fancy stuff. Um, so let's get started. Um, we want to write a page object. I'm going to grab my tests. If you haven't seen it already in video number two, I have a look at how to write a more advanced test. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be refactoring some of this code to try and make a page object that represents the uh, Google advanced search page. I have the developer guide open here. What I'm going to look at is working with page objects. Now, if I look at working with page objects, uh, you can see there's a good explanation how to use page objects, how to configure them. Uh, what we want to start off with is this property page objects path. So I'm going to go into my Nightwatch conf. I'm going to duplicate this line. And instead of having tests, I'm going to have a folder which is called page objects. So what I'm saying, doing here is in the Nightwatch configuration, I'm telling Nightwatch, look, this is where you should look for page objects. Um, and I'm going to create a new file inside a page objects directory called Google advanced search.js. And this I'm actually going to copy because I'm going to need it later. And now we have a new file, new empty file called Google advanced search. Now the API for page objects is fairly simple. Simple. You have three things in a page object. You have a URL property, which is a string. You have an elements object. And you have a commands array. And it's actually an array of objects. And to be honest, I only ever use the first object. So I'm not sure why it's an array, but that's not important. So the URL is the default URL for that page object. So I'm going to go into my previous test, which was the advanced search. I'm going to grab that and that's going to become the URL of my page object. Elements is basically in its simplest form, it's a dictionary where you have an, a custom defined ID, which identifies your element. And the value is either a CSS selector, an XPath selector, it can be a, a fancy object. But in the most simplest form, it's just a CSS selector. And I'm going to be using it that way because that's what I need right now. And what we can do is grab basically all of these guys. I'm going to be transferring into this place. Let's use some fancy magic to sort this out. Boom. Now we have main query input and I'm going to remove all of these redundant selectors because we don't need that. So we have main query input language drop down opener language drop down value last update drop down value. This isn't how I want it to look at, at the end. Um, but we're refactoring. So I'm going to move things around a bit more later on. Um, but yeah, for now, let's say it's good. Um, and then we have commands. So commands, um, basically, just the way that Nightwatch defines some default commands. So we have click, we have set value, we can choose to define our own commands. Now, Nightwatch has a concept of custom commands, which is something I haven't covered yet. Um, and they are applied globally to your test suite. And you can actually define specific commands for page objects, which is what we're going to do right now. The command I'm going to create now is actually something that I could define globally. But um, for the sake of this video, just to make you understand how page objects work, I'm going to define it on the page object. So what the command is actually going to be is something like select filter. So select filter, if you remember when we saw the test originally, I can show you the test again. What we're doing is we're clicking language drop down opener and we're setting a value. 
Now I want to simplify this so that I don't have two commands and what I do is something like select filter and I give it the name of the filter like language and the value I want to set on with like IT. So I want to be able to write something like this which will simplify my code and will make it more reusable. So let's say um, select filter will receive a selector and it will receive a value. Okay. Um, so before I go into implementation, I just want to recap. This is ver the very basic API of a page object. So we have a URL, elements, and commands. Now, um, yeah, like I said, before I actually write the implementation of the select filter command, I want to show you how to use the basic elements of a page object. So um, I can now refactor this. I can remove all of this. And what I'm to use the page inside my test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page variable. This is a local variable. It doesn't matter what name I give it. And I access the page object that I'm creating on the side by doing Google advanced search. Actually, I'd copied it earlier so I could re grab that. And then this. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing an instance of the page object that I can reuse. Um, and the page object exposes most of the Nightwatch API. So most of the commands you can find on browser.click, browser.setValue. You can also do page.click, page.setValue. The main difference, and this is the big advantage that page objects give us, is that page objects are aware of custom elements. Um, and for me to explain that, I'm going to do something like this. So first off, a uh, page has a URL property. So we can use that URL property to actually navigate. Uh, so page objects have a custom function that browser does not called navigate. And if I don't pass anything here into navigate, it's going to use the default URL of the page object. So I don't have to rewrite it here. Then uh, this main query input selector, which has now become main query input, is actually an element on my page object. So if I use this special character, which is the at symbol at the beginning of this string, what I'm telling Nightwatch is use the selector that is defined on the page object with this ID, use the element, sorry, not the selector. So we can see that inside my page object, I have an element called main query input. So when I do set value, and I use this special syntax with the at symbol, what I'm actually saying to Nightwatch is set value on the main query input. So set value on this element. And this makes my test code a lot simpler and a lot more uh, smooth. It basically gives you the possibility to move a bit more of the complex logic and all the defining of elements inside one central place, which is the page object. And then in the test, you can focus on actually writing the test itself. And the test code becomes a lot more simple and a lot easier to read. So I'm, that's how I'm going to refactor main query input. But like I said, I'd like to have a function that does select filter something along these. Actually, I'm going to write it this way. So we have language drop down. OK, I'm going to give it the selector that I'm interested in. But I also want to give it just a language rather than having to write something like this. So what my select filter will receive is a selector and a value. Now, if I look at how I was doing this before, let me actually copy this. Uh, inside the context of a page object command, you'll have this is actually refers to the page. So I like to do this because it helps me think about page objects easier. And one thing you always have to remember is to return the page object inside your command, because this is what allows you to do chaining between functions It's actually each command returns an instance of what it was called on. This is what allows you to do dot click dot set value dot something else is because the, each command returns the instance of what it was called on. So by doing this page equals this return this. Uh, now I copied this. And I basically want to do something very similar to this, right? With the difference that this will be my selector. This is the actual filter that I want to uh, filter. Uh, so we have language drop down. And I can copy this, delete that. 
and what I'm going to be doing is something like um, value equals I'm having a hard time explaining this while I do it <laughs> so I'm going to try doing it and then I'm going to explain it afterwards but what we have here is something like this this doesn't look good damn you VS code value okay um, and although I separated things to help you understand how this actually works with the chaining this is a case in which I could just simplify everything by writing something like this so there you go now what I'm doing is return this click on the selector and then click on the option inside that selector with the given value so here I had IT it's actually going to be lang ET IT sorry and now I have a select filter functionality so I can simplify this again by saying last update drop down uh, is going to be this guy here I want to set M so what I'm going to do again is uh, last update drop down select M so this I can remove this also I can remove and I'm actually going to do go one step further and define a command called set query with a value and I'm just going to do this set value main query input query to make it even more simpler for me to write my test so now in my test I don't even need to do this I can just do set query and there you go this submit button I'm not even going to do click submit I'm going to do submit now this comment I can remove submit search actually search I like it this way and so we're going to have search return this dot click submit button so now we have a very nice API in our page object um, this represents again the advanced search page um, so we can set query we can select a filter and then we can search which is what we were doing in our test but now it's a bit more verbose um, and our test has become a lot simpler so we have navigate to the Google advanced page uh, this I'm going to move to the bottom I'm not interested in refactoring everything this is just a demonstration um, so here we're probably going to go back to browser but this section here is where we're using the page object command API so what we're doing is uh, getting an instance of a page object navigating to the home uh, default URL of that page instance setting the query um, by just calling set query selecting filters on this uh, page objects and then searching now you can see how this test code has been greatly simplified compared to what we had before and actually I can show you the diff right here and you can see how um, yeah this isn't super great let's do this maybe it's a bit better but you can see that these I don't know 20 odd lines of code where we were doing all this set value click and stuff like that and all of this defining of selectors in the test code has gone now we only have one instance of the page object and a very very simple series of uh, commands to do the same thing we were doing before now this is all fine and dandy but I haven't tested any of this, any of this. so now comes the moment of truth where I actually test it and we see if it works da 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 
Da da da. It worked. First time. Did it? I can't believe that. That's amazing. You just witnessed something incredible. It worked first time. It's a lie. Sorry, took me a bit to calm down right there. I got a bit excited. Um, but yeah, it worked. Here we are. The same, uh, we have the same output we used to have. The test ran the same thing it was running before. I didn't change any of the assertion part of the test. Again, because I don't want to go too into depth and make this a 30 minute video. Um, but we did see how to uh, run basic page object API, which is navigate, define custom commands, and define custom elements. Uh, I hope you see the benefits of this. Um, and I recommend that you go through the API on Nightwatch page. There is also an article that goes really into depth on how page objects work. Um, I haven't read this, I'm going to be honest, but it could be useful. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, as always, leave a like, subscribe, comment, share with your grandma, do those things. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback, questions, doubts, please leave a comment below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.